Hi friends, uh, I'm Pia Lee and I run an Agile community named Discuss Agile Network. And today we have something very interesting to talk about. We have an interesting framework called My Personal Agility. Now you may think, what is this My Personal Agility all about? Well, we can know this from the creator and founder of this framework himself, Peter Stevens. Peter is a certified scrum trainer from Switzerland. Today, he is here present with us to tell us more about my personal agility. Peter, over to you. Hello, Piali. Nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is, is Peter Stevens. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm a scrum trainer, and what I do is I try to uh, inspire people to change their world for the better. Uh, after being confronted with this problem myself, I ended up creating a framework, which I now call Personal Agility. Uh, the objective is to do more that matters. And what I'd like to do is, is share that with you today. So here we go. What did you do last week? Does the answer to sort of roll off your tongue, can you list everything that you've accomplished? That's actually a surprisingly powerful question. Uh, most people, when I ask them the question, they have to stop and think and say, hmm, what did I do? What did I get done? But here's the problem. If you don't know what you did, if you don't know what you're doing, if you haven't thought about it in a bigger context, how do you know that what you're doing matters? Matters to you, matters to your customer. How do you know that you're going in the right direction? And, you know, this was basically my problem. And so I started to, to look at it in more detail. So what you're seeing is my life about, I don't know, about a year ago. And, and you can see the calendar is completely full. I've got three different things you know, going on more or less in parallel. The keyword is connected. Okay? And the problem is I felt like I was running and running and running and just never getting things done. And yeah, there's got to be a better way. So I started looking for a better way. And this actually led me to create a new framework. Okay, and I started doing the framework and I said, wow, this is cool. And then I started sharing the framework with, with friends and colleagues and talking about how it works and the framework got much better. And they also said, wow, this is cool. And I decided after about six months of doing this that this needed to be a thing, this needed to be a book. And today you can see I'm uh, working on this book together with uh, fellow uh, scrum trainer, Maria Mattarelli. And, um, we found, we found that personal agility is a powerful framework, and we'd like to share that with you. And we're doing that through our book, and I'll be doing that with you today. And just as a quick parenthesis, I'd like to make sure that everybody is muted because I'm hearing some typing or something like that. So let's talk about how personal agility works and how it can help you. Uh, there are basically three things that I want to talk about today. Um, the first is the whole, you know, how to... How do we get there from here? Why do we have this thing called personal agility? Uh, what's the problem that it's trying to solve? Uh, we'll then look closer at how my personal agility actually works. Um, I believe my personal agility can help people really improve their, uh, their performance. And finally, uh, we, we actually said this is going to be a workshop. Now this for me is a bit of an experiment. I've never done a workshop uh, as a webinar before, but well, we'll see what happens. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, oh, that's me, by the way. Um, let's see, is there anything that I haven't mentioned? Well, you, the only thing that we haven't already talked about is the fact that uh, I've been to India a number of times. Uh, maybe some of you saw me at the Scrum Gathering in Bangalore. Uh, if you recognize the Roman numerals, that had something to do with my talk uh, on um, you know, an introduction to mob programming. So for our first poll, what I'd like to do is uh, find out who is in the room today. Okay, so you'll see we've got a couple of possibilities. Uh, PLE will be, starting the, uh, will be starting the poll in just a second. And we want to find out what kind of background is here uh, you know, from, the, from you folks out there uh, in webinar land. Good time to start the poll. Yes, I have started the poll. Okay, so 40%, very substantial majority are providing services under contract. 25% uh, each for providing consultancy to other companies, and 
and 25% of you are creating your own products. Awesome. Yeah, and by the way, uh, you'll notice the, the, the poll system here doesn't really support the concept of other. Um, so what does that mean? Um, you know, put something in the chat. Yes, you know, in the chat I, room. I, Jessica, I everybody, will. Everybody, and just let us, let us see what you're doing. Yes. Okay, so... Okay, so let's move on. Oh, here's what I'd like to do. We're going to talk about three, com three topics. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it within 10 to 12 minutes each. And then after each block, we will do a Q&A session. Um, now, what I'd like to ask you to do, you know, I know webinars is, is kind of, man, the temptation is to do work. Uh, but I'd like to encourage you to turn off your distractions at this point. If, if any of you have taken a course with me, you know, one of my favorite uh, points is that multitasking is evil. So now is a good time to turn off your telephone, you know, either turn it off or at least put it into airplane mode. Uh, kill your email and just kind of relax and focus and, and let your mind start to accept new possibilities. Okay, so probably for about the first 45 minutes to an hour, we'll be looking at how personal agility works. Uh, then what we're going to do is switch over to a workshop mode. I hope you brought post-its or, or um, three by five cards with you uh, so that we can uh, you know, actually go out and get you started with, um, with personal agility. Um, and what I'd also like to encourage you to do is uh, take a picture of your results, tweet them. Uh, please use the hashtag personal agility so we can all see what's going on. And as I say, I think we said about questions, the idea, please put your questions in the chat window. And Piali is going to be monitoring the chat. And then when I stop, she will ask me the questions so that I can answer them directly. Yes. Okay, you ready? Yep. Let's go. Okay, so what I'd like to do is um, uh, talk to you a bit about the challenge first. You know, what, what led me to create personal agility or what's the problem that we're trying to solve. And then I'll tell you my own story of how we got to personal agility. Oh, and we're back to doing a poll again. That was quick. Okay, so you know, you all out there, you're trying to do real work, and doing real work is not always easy. So what I'd like to ask you to do is, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna flip on the co poll again. And I'd like you to tell us, you know, what do you see as being the biggest challenge to working effectively? Okay, yeah, you know, I'm when just, you think back uh, to life. running the poll. So let's start the second poll. Okay, and once again, you know, we're going to take a minute. Um, I've actually spent the last two weeks interviewing people from as far west as Vancouver and as far east as Bangalore uh, about the problems. Um, unfortunately, our poll system will only let us do five points. Um, and so I, I, I pick some. There are some other ones, so if, if your thing doesn't fit here, just please... Um, you know, put it in the chat window so we can see what the problems are. But, you know, conflicting interests of stakeholders. Okay, sometimes the stakeholders, they just want completely different things, and this leads to unclear or shifting, oh, the word priorities is missing in point number one. Uncertainty about what you need to actually create. Maybe a lack of uh, co cooperation. Uh, promising too much. And as I say, there's that favorite other. Okay, and we're about a minute into it. Let's show the results. Well, we only got 82%, so let's give it yeah. five more seconds and then switch, close the poll and show the results. Yeah, I'm closing the poll now. Okay, okay. Uh, we got 87% voted, and the winner is, wow, too many stakeholders, unclear and shifting priorities, the clear winners, uh, followed by uncertainty about what needs to get done. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back into the presentation. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Now, after my interviews last week, as I said, I, I spoke to 22 different people, uh, about half hour interview each about the, 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 the challenges, fears, and frustrations about trying to get stuff done in the real world. And all I can say is I think it's a wonder we get anything done at, at all. So for all of you who, despite all of the challenges, are getting things done, please give yourselves a pat on the back. Now, I'm not going to go through and read the list, but I think because you can read it at least as quickly as I can. Um, but I think this will give you a um, uh, give you a flavor. One of the things that struck me the most was, you know, in this in this age of modern management, you know, with matrix management, it's hard to get a clear decision about what we're supposed to do. Um, the other thing that surprised me is that many people that I talked to were coming from a Scrum or Agile context, and these are people who you would think would be good at prioritizing, and even there, that was a bit of a challenge. Now, as I say, this was my challenge. Um, I showed you this picture before. Uh, 
I don't know, I, I'm one of those people, I guess I like to work, I like what I do, I get a lot of satisfaction from it. Uh, and so I've always got lots of things that I could implement. Now, I like to think I'm pretty good at implementing, but, well, I kept having these ideas and I kept getting stuff to do and I got more and more and more and stuff to do. Now, one thing which I'm not good at doing is saying no or saying enough. Uh, on the other hand, I'm pretty good at procrastination, so I finally get into emergency mode and, and spend the weekend, you know, trying to get things done. Um, so how did I try to compensate this? Well, one thing was working longer. Uh, I also spent a lot of time trying to get better at getting things done. Okay, so uh, I spent a long time doing desktop Kanban, which I'll show you in a moment. I had this string of post-its going all around my notebook. And I also tried managing my time, making estimates, and, and I discovered that like everyone else's, my estimates really suck. Yeah, and I found myself working 60 hours a week or more. Um, I didn't feel like I was making any progress in my business, and I was getting really exhausted. Oh, and even little things, like getting stuff done for my family. Uh, my kids, both my kids' bicycles were out of service for months. I kind of knew I was supposed to do something about it, but there was always something more important to do. Um, and, oh yeah, oh, my kids had kind of given up hope, so they stopped reminding me about it. And after a while, I got to the point saying, well, is this what the future is going to be like? You know, is, is, isn't there a better way? And here you see a summary of kind of my attempts at finding a better way. As I say, this is desktop Kanban. Uh, we've got waiting, working, done, working away. It's around, around your notebook. Now, um, this, this was actually not from the time when I was doing desktop Kanban. I, I did this to take the picture. When I was doing test, desktop Kanban, the post-its went all the way to the bright edge of the, uh, of the computer, and they also went around the desktop monitor. Uh, and they probably had some on the floor as well. So, you know, this, this just wasn't, the problem wasn't, for me, wasn't limiting work in progress. Um, the problem was more limiting the backlog. Now, one day I had this really brilliant idea. I said, you know, you're a Scrum trainer. What can you learn from Scrum? Now, I, I hadn't really, I've never really used Scrum at home because it always seemed a bit too heavy, you know, and, you know, there's three roles and this sort of stuff, and I, I just, it just wasn't a good fit. So for me, the question was, how can I scale it down? How can I make it work for me? And, well, one of the things that I've been focusing on in the last couple of years is really on the basic patterns of Scrum. And so I thought, what if I throw away all of Scrum, get back down to the basic patterns, and see how I can apply that to me? Now, it turns out what Scrum does, Scrum is actually very simple. There are a couple of basic patterns. The first one is inspect and adapt at regular intervals. The next one is produce something of value at regular intervals. And then we have the three roles. So we have the team that solves the whole problem. We have one voice that sets priorities, that's a product owner. And we have a coach who helps everyone else get better. This is the essence of Scrum. And I wondered, could I apply that to my own situation? Well, there's just one problem. In real life, there's just me, myself, and I. You know, so how can I be my own scrum master and my own product owner and everything? But I thought, hey, I'm a scrum trainer. I can do this, right? So I decided to give it a try. And, you know, sometimes they say, well, we have an expression here in Switzerland. They say, trying is much more value that, or much more valuable than discussing. So, I decided to give it a try. One thing which I noticed right away is I, the task that I was giving myself, I talked much more about the goal, what was the purpose, what was I trying to accomplish. Uh, someone told me about this thing called Eisenhower, where you divide your to-dos into urgent and important, and things that are urgent and important. And so what I did is I basically did a planning. I used Trello to do the planning once a week, and I tried to plan my day each morning. Well, almost. Um, for me, one of the big challenges was that I wasn't very good at being my own scrum master. Um, I could think about priorities and I could do work, but the problem is I couldn't let go long enough to really think um, in a systematic way about what I was doing. The stop, stand back, reflect uh, wasn't working. And so I was just, you know, working and working and working. And so I asked myself, well, who could be my personal scrum master? And at this point, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Sabina. Now, some people say, what, your wife? Wait a minute, wait, no, 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 no. This, this is not going to work. Can your product owner really be your coach? 
Um, but I didn't really have a better alternative. And so we spent some time talking about it. I explained to her this thing called the coaching stance. And basically what that means is the coach does not get to tell the coachee what to do, quite the contrary. Uh, what the coach does is help the coachee figure out what to do. And we, we were, as I say, we were both a little bit skeptical of it, but we decided to give it a try for eight weeks. So we decided to meet on Tuesday mornings. And we sat down. I was, by that time, I was pretty much using the Trello board. And we started talking. Well, first question, what have we accomplished or what have I accomplished? This was mostly about me. What have I accomplished since last week? Uh, what's on my plate? What could I do? Of those things, what's important and what's urgent? And what can I really expect to get done? And so this turned out to be an opportunity for me to reflect. And it was also uh, an opportunity for us to sync up. And that was cool. So what happened? A week later, we got, we got back together. Uh, in Scrum, we would call this a sprint review. And we looked at, we went through the things that we'd gotten done. And her reaction was, wow, we got things done that have been our, on the back burner for months. Hey, we even got our kids' bicycles fixed. After eight weeks, she was saying, I feel like we've become a team. Okay, and so with this, the idea of personal agility as a collaborative framework, even though it's about me, and myself and I getting things done, but it's also got this, this aspect of collaboration, which turns it into a coaching framework. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, at the first blush, uh, personal agility is about getting things done. Just like getting things done, there's personal Kanban, there's desktop Kanban, even Scrum is like that. Okay, so what's different about it? Well, for me, one of the key differences is that the flow is your friend. It's like a, um, it's like a center of gravity pulling you back helping me do or helping you do what you want to do or what you need to do. And second, the essence is about asking yourself powerful questions. Now what's a powerful question? A powerful question is one uh, where you have to think before you can give the answer. Okay, so what that does is this actually turns it into a coaching framework and it turns it into a collaboration framework. Okay, so those three roles, you know, we talked about doing, prioritizing, and questioning. Well, it's possible to do all of them yourself. And one of the things I'm still working on is if I don't have a coach, you know, like how do I do my daily scrums effectively? Um, but, you know, you can, do, you can do them yourself or you can ask someone for help. And it turned out that asking someone for help was also a hugely powerful way of saying, how do I get unblocked when I'm stuck? So what has personal scrum done for, personal agility done for me? Well, one of the things is, I know that I'm on course going where I want to go. I'm doing what is truly important. Okay, I've already talked about getting my kids' bicycles fixed, but for me the huge difference is I'm now able to plan much more long term. I can make time for things that I need to do, be that personal, be that at work, and I can also say no to things that don't matter or that don't make sense. Um, I've been using this to work with my suppliers. For instance, I work with a team in Vietnam to develop my websites, and we understand each other better and collaborate more effectively. Um, and I've also discovered that because I'm relatively clear about what I've accomplished for the day, when I've achieved my goals, I, I can actually turn off my laptop and, st and not worry through the evening. So I, I can go home and my mind is at peace. Um, so I can, make thing I can make space for things that are really important. Oh, and by the way, what's, what's really been, been noticeable is how the people around me seeing as being responsive and effective in their eyes. Now this has been the best part for me as the, as the creator of personal agility. So I started sharing personal agility and sometimes, you know, sometimes with a formal training or a discussion, sometimes just give them the idea and people say, oh yeah, I can do that. And they go off and they do it. And then six months later, I, I get an email from someone saying, hey, this really works. Okay, that's why I'm writing a book on it. So at this point, uh, we kind of got the first introduction to personal agility. Uh, what I'd like to do is take a moment and see if we have any questions. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Then uh, Vishal is asking questions are more about professional obstacles. However, this is more about personal agility. This is a bit confusing. Okay. I mean, you know, if we're talking about using it professionally, you know, one of the things that we see here with, with personal agility, it's about one, maybe two people. 
Okay, so if we think of something like Scrum or Kanban or extreme programming as ways to get teams to work effectively, personal agility is about, first of all, helping yourself work together effectively, but also get alignment with key stakeholders. Okay, so we've got a framework for asking them questions. Um, you know, this concept of taking, I'm going to touch, touch on this a little bit later when we talk about how um, personal agility works. That's going to be the next session. As we start seeing, you know, how can it help you? Let's get things done. Um, how can you uh, figure out what really matters? And finally, how can you improve collaboration? Let's say with, uh, with your colleagues at work, with your manager, maybe you've got a supplier or a uh, customer who you need to synchronize with. Okay, uh, we have another question. Okay. George is saying too many things yes. to do, not enough time in the day, managing priorities, meeting life, business, health, and family goals at the same time. Oh my God, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is exactly the problem. And so, so basically, you know, when we say prioritize, okay. Prioritize means there are some things that I absolutely positively have to get done today. So those are the ones I do first. Okay? And some things are important, but they can wait. But on the other hand, if you let them wait too long, you know, then, um, then they stop being important or they come back to bite you or all of a sudden they are urgent. And so the idea with, the, with this reflection, this weekly reflection that we do, is that we keep an eye on what's important, what's urgent, and then of all the things that we could do, we also recognize that there are only so many hours in the day. And sooner or later, we have to stop. Sooner or later, something isn't going to get done. Now, the interesting question about saying no is the question is not, are you going to say no? Because there's always more to do than you have time to do. So it's not, are you going to say no? But when are you going to say no? And how are you going to say no? So at this point, let's because let, we're, we're actually asking a lot of questions that come in the next section. So I think what we'll do is we will let, let's move on to the next section, and maybe we'll take a couple more questions after after we get through here. Let's um, let's talk about how personal agility works, and there are basically three levels, in, in my opinion. The first is the basics, getting good at you know getting things done. I mean, this is what we're trying to do. Uh, this this is not a new problem. Um, the next level, figuring out what really matters because some things are really important to get done. They're going to be important to our stakeholders. They're going to be important to our families. They're going to be important to us or how we feel about ourselves. Um, and the last is about collaboration. Because even if you're working hard, if no one appreciates what you're doing or if you're doing the wrong things, then you're not going to be seen as being effective. And so how can we, you know, on the one hand, be more effective in our collaboration? On the other hand, uh, how can we be seen as being more uh, effective in the collaboration? So <clears throat> let's, start, let's start this with a, with a poll. One thing which I'm a bit curious about is to what extent Agile is a topic in your organization. So Piali, let's, let's, start the, uh, let's start the third poll, I guess this is. Yes. And here we've poll. got, we'll give it a minute once again, we've got five topics. Yes. To what extent is Agile a topic in your organization? Now, for, first answer is basically not at all or not applicable. Uh, the second answer is our leadership believes that agility is a mindset. We are currently doing Scrum or Kanban at the team level. We're applying a scaling framework like Safe, Lesser, or, or something else. Uh, Enterprise Scrum is the last one. And the last one is, well, we call ourselves Agile, but we're really just Agile in name only. Yeah, so it looks like most of you are doing Scrum or Kanban at the team level. Um, a quarter of you, 28% believe that your leadership gets it, what Agile is about, or they are totally clueless, one or the other, that question might be misinterpreted. Okay, uh, and a significant point of people are saying, well, yes, we're claiming to be Agile, but we're not actually being Agile. What's really good here is that most of you, you know, you're doing Scrum or Kanban at the team level, and I assume that we include the people who are listening. So what you're gonna find is that the tools and techniques that we use here uh, are gonna be familiar to you. Now, uh, Personal agility is different from, from, especially from Scrum in very subtle ways, uh, but we'll come to that when we get to it. So let's, um, let's turn off the poll and go back to the, uh, the presentation. Okay, so let's talk about the basics of how personal agility works. Okay, and so the first thing we can look at is, you know, kind of what are the 
pieces or building blocks that, that make up personal agility. And really the heart of personal agility are these six powerful questions. What really matters? What did I accomplish last week? What could, could I do this week? Maybe you've heard of the concept of divergence and convergence. This is a divergent front question. So you, so you can consider alternatives before moving forward. Then of all the things that you could do, what's important and what's urgent? And then given the things that are important and urgent, and it's quite possible that you've got more things that you can do in the week, so what do you want to accomplish? And finally, who could help? And this, this question came out of the, you know, who could be my scrum master? Um, this is actually a good question when you're stuck on something, when you're procrastinating on something, when you're, you know, just, just can't make any progress, you say, okay, who could help me on this? Now, there's basically one ceremony, which is the, uh, the weekly, I call the celebrate, oh, this is wrong. It's not celebrate and plan, it's celebrate and choose. Okay, now why, why do we call that celebrate and choose and not review and plan? Well, that's because there's no accountability in personal agility. You're only accountable to yourself. And anything that you got done is a good thing. The other thing is, the, at the beginning of the week, we select what we want to do, but life usually happens faster than our planning. You could get a phone call on the middle of the second day, and that's going to completely change your day or change your week, and that's just the way it is. Um, so, you know, planning and making a commitment isn't going to change that. Now, in Scrum, they say, hey, we want to get things done and we want to stay focused and, you know, the decision-making processes are more complex, so they emphasize more staying on track. Here, we emphasize being focused on what, what really matters and staying on course. And so, the assumption is we're always doing our best to stay on course and we'll celebrate what we got done. And, in fact, I am just going to take two seconds and I'm going to replace that plan because it's looking at me. And I say, no, it's not celebrate and plan, it's celebrate and choose. Now, why do we call this choose? Well, because choosing is empowering. And I've heard over and over uh, from people is um, uh, people don't believe in themselves. Well, why don't they believe in themselves? Well, because we don't get to make any decisions. And when we do make decisions, we get told that they're wrong. And so the idea here is you're, getting into, you're, you're taking, uh, taking the wheel, taking authority, uh, for what you do, ta also taking responsibility. So you get to choose, it's your life. Now, in the basic form of, of personal agility, there's one artifact, we call that the priorities map. Uh, you'll see certain similarities to a Kanban board, but it's actually closer to a story map. Um, and then when you start trying to ask the deeper questions, we find that there are two more artifacts, one called the forces map, and the other one called the breadcrumb trail, and I'll come back and explain about what, what those are as we move forward. Now, for the basics of just getting started, you don't really need to think much about what I call the two trinities. Um, you know, the one is you know, the three roles in Scrum. Uh, the other is thinking of you as me, myself, and I. And maybe you might choose to delegate one of those roles. So we'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, so the essence is we've got this really simple framework for doing more that, more that matters. Once a week, we ask ourselves these six questions. We might also ask ourselves once a day, what do I want to accomplish? And we celebrate what we've accomplished, and we choose what we want to accomplish moving forward. And that is the essence of personal agility. So how does this look as you're working through your week? Well, if we think of this as a loop, kind of like Scrum, what came in? Well, we're in a current state. We did certain things. Um, we ask ourselves these questions, what matters? And once we're already in the flow and have already figured it out, what matters is mostly a reminder you know, kind of an anchor point of what's our course, where are we going. Then we have this reflection, what could I do this week? And usually what we're doing is, you know, as we get ideas during the week, we write them down. And then in the celebrate and choose ritual, we come back and, and review that list and pick what are the most important things, what are the most urgent things, and of those things, what can I expect to get done? Okay, and so then we go through the week, we're doing the week, and, you know, the essence is myself, I do everything myself. So. Personal agility is mostly about doing. We come to the end of the week, and we go back into this reflection. What did you accomplish? Pat yourself on the back. Okay? And the idea is, through every cycle, on the one hand, you've got stuff done. On the other hand, you're closer to being who you want to be or accomplishing the long-term goal that you're striving to accomplish. Now, who could help? Who could help is a really useful question. 
Um, and in fact, just to, just this week, I was having problems. I was I was procrastinating on something, and I had it for three days in in a row as this is the most important thing I have to do today. And for some reason, by the, the end of the day came, and I hadn't done it yet. And I was kind of kicking myself. But what I did is I said, okay, I'm stuck on this. Who can help me with it? And this led me to identify who could help me out with it and send them an email so that I could get unstuck on it. And now I've got, well, I actually had two things that I was procrastinating on. I've got one of them done, and I'm, I'm patting myself on the back for the one I accomplished, and I'll be... I'm quite confident that I'll soon have the last one done. So this who could help, whenever you don't know what to do or how to move forward, ask yourself the question who could help. And they may just have a different perspective on it and help you get unblocked. Now, I've mentioned the word prior, uh, priorities map. Okay, and so the next thing that we're gonna do is visualize. And this is the other key tool of personal agility. Now, you can do this I use Trello uh, in real life because I move around a lot. Uh, for teaching it, I, use, uh, I recommend using cards. Also, cards are you know, they're, they're more physical to get you started. Um, some people use other tools. It really doesn't make a difference what the tool is. Um, but the idea is you'll see in this leftmost column, what really matters, I know what my priorities are. The next most column, what could I do? Okay, this is collecting the things that I could do. Uh, generally, I try to sort them by importance. Um, things that are urgent, things that need to get done this week. I, I make a separate column for them. And the reason I have two columns is so that the urgent doesn't push the important down to the bottom, because then I forget about the important completely. And sometimes, even if it's not urgent, I have to do something that's important, um, because, well, it's important, and if I don't do it, it won't get done. Okay, and so then we go through with the, as I said, you know, basically for each of the questions, there's a corresponding column and you put the cards in the column as appropriate. Okay, now, <coughs> the, once you get into the flow, your typical, um, your typical um, ceremony will start with celebrating what you got done and then choosing your goals for the next week. And if you're doing this with someone else, you'll also use this as an opportunity to sync up on what you're doing. Now, if you're doing it for the first time, I suggest you do it exactly the same way. Just go down and, you know, you don't know what you did. You didn't make cards. You didn't choose anything last week, but you still got things done. So just go make some cards for what you got done last week. And this is your first opportunity to pat yourself on the back. The important thing, though, is to set a regular rhythm. Now, does it have to be every week? Uh, for me, I find that a week is a nice planning rhythm, but sometimes I miss a week, or sometimes it's 10 days because of whatever reasons and whatever urgent thing. Um, so, one of the nice things about the, the priorities map is that it's your friend. It's always there for you, you know, when you come back to it. And if you miss it for a couple of days or if you don't have a chance to put things all the way into the done column, well, that's okay. They'll still be there. Just put them in the done column when you get there. Um, remember, the purpose of this, this is like a, um, uh, this, is, this, this is a center of gravity pulling you towards what you want to do. Um, so there's no reason to feel guilty if you don't do it perfectly or if you miss a beat because, you know, hey, life happens. Okay, so this is in 25 words or less how personal agility works, you know, kind of the basic, uh, uh, basic algorithm for how we get work done. Uh, do we have any questions at this point? Yeah, okay. we have a couple of questions. Yeah, Pradeep is asking, my okay. personal dilemma, there are so many sources and stuff to read about Agile. How we have to prioritize? Yeah. Is personal agility helpful here? Okay. Um, one of the things, one of the things, yes, I mean, I think this is the purpose of personal agility, is to think about on a weekly basis, maybe even a daily basis, what's important. Of all the things you could do, what do you really have to get done today? Um, of all the things you could do, what, can, what do you have to keep in sight, even though it's not sufficiently urgent, to you know, force itself to the top of your, uh, top of your priority list? This, is, this, I think, is one of the things that makes achieving long-term goals possible. You know, if you've got a lot of urgent stuff and, and things, that are, um, you know, things that just have to be done, um, one of the examples I use is like if you're a ship in a storm you know, and you're worried about the ship sinking, well, yes, you have to prevent the ship from sinking, but you also need to get to a safe harbor. 
So your first priority is to prevent the ship from sinking, and you need to make sure you're at least investing a little bit of your time so that that ship is pointing toward the harbor so that you can get out of the storm. Okay. Now, when we talk about prioritization, uh, one of the key questions for prioritization is why is this more than that? And in personal agility, we call the answer to that question, what really matters? And so the idea is if you have a common understanding of what really matters, then you have an ability to make decisions. And you have an ability to prioritize. Okay. Uh, we have a next question asked by okay. Pallavi. So one more question and then we'll move on. Yes. Uh, yeah. Pallavi is asking yes. the key question is what is required uh, to be agile at organization level as mostly the agile at only team level? What is required to be agile at an organizational level? This is a hugely good question. Um, there are a lot of consultants who will, sell, who will tell you, ah, our scaled agile framework is absolutely necessary. Oh, sorry, I wasn't intending to use a, uh, somebody's trademark. But we have this, this, this big system. And I actually believe agility is a mindset. And if we go back to the Agile Manifesto, um, everybody talks about the four values. And, and one thing which I think people have forgotten, and I, and I don't really understand why, that first sentence, we are uncovering better ways of doing what we do by doing it and helping others to do the same. And what that means is that we are fundamentally about learning and we're fundamentally about collaborating with others to improve how we work. And if I were going to answer your question, what does it take to make an organization agile? That is the mindset that you need to have all the way from the top to the bottom. And if you've got, and by the way, if you get from the top to the bottom, you'll probably discover that your organization has gotten much flatter. So I, I, would, I would start with, with the mindset. And with personal agility, one of the things that I've tried to do is find a way that you can live that mindset without having to challenge the hierarchy the values at the beginning. One, one of the problems that you have with Scrum is, is that you go from, um, you know, you go from a top-down mentality to a peer-to-peer -peer mentality, you know, kind of at an instant. And when we talk about collaboration, what we're going to do, what you're going to see, is that you can start, um, you can start talking in a mere, in a more peer-to-peer -peer way, without having to challenge the hierarchy. And I think this makes the transition much softer. So, next question. Yeah, we have uh, like similar thing, one or two people is saying, is there some software to manage this digitally? There is too much stationery involved in this exercise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I personally use Trello uh, to, manage my, to manage my backlog. Um, there is no out-of-the-box software to do it. Uh, however, Trello gives me, you know, 95% of what I need. You know, so I've got the ability to make columns and make cards and label the cards and color code them. And uh, the screen dumps, the digital screen dumps that you've been seeing have all come from Trello. Um, I have heard of people using Jira to do it. Uh, I've never done that myself, so I have no opinion on it. Uh, basically, if you can make a Kanban board with it, you can do personal agility with it. Uh, George is saying, it seems I'm always caught on a daily treadmill of fighting fires. I lose sight of what matters. How do I train myself to see mm -hmm. uh, the difference? Um, that's a really good question. How do you train yourself to see the distant difference? Well, I think the first thing that I would do is I would find a way to reserve 15 minutes every day to think about the difference. Okay, so to ask yourself, you know, what's urgent and what's important? You know, what's a fire? You know, remember the ship in the storm model. If all you do is try to keep the ship afloat, but you don't pay attention to where the ship is, you'll never get into a harbor. You know, and so when we talk about firefighting, well, let me, let me give you another example. Uh, think, of, um, uh, think of having a, a stable, and you've got, say, a horse or some other animal that's supposed to be contained in the stable, and one day there's a hole in the fence, and the horse gets out. Now, there are at least three things that you have to do. Um, the first thing you have to do is you have to go get the horse. Uh, the next thing you have to do is you have to fix the hole in the stable. And honest people can have an argument about which one of them really should be first and second. That's fine. But the more interesting question is, how come you had a hole in the stable in the first place? 
Okay, and you also need to devote some time to making sure that you don't have holes in the stable, or ho sorry, holes in the fence. Okay, and this is this concept of balancing what's urgent and important so that you make long-term progress. And this process of reflecting on what's urgent and what's important, this is how you make space for, you know, saying, how do we prevent holes from appearing in the fence in the future? So, at this point, what I'd like to do is move on to discuss, discussing this concept of figuring out what really matters. Okay, now before we talk about this, I'd like to give you kind of a metaphor. Um, and this metaphor is navigation. Okay, so here we are, we're sitting in the middle of a sea. Uh, this particular example took place in the Gulf of Mexico. And somewhere out there, there is a boat. So where is the boat? Well, you know, a GPS can tell you that. Okay, you've got a navigation system, you turn it on, it will actually tell you with great precision where you are. Now, with just one measurement, you don't know where you're going. So how do you figure out, well, how do you figure out where you're going? Well, the first question that the, the GPS uses to answer that question is, where has the boat been? Okay, now, assuming you've got the GPS turned on, it can tell you where you've been. Okay, and it can also tell you how fast you're going. This leads us to the next question, which is, where is the boat going, and how long will it take till we get there? Okay, now, your GPS, based on where you've been, it can make that prediction. Okay, and so here we're predicting that in, I don't know, two days or three, twice the time that it took to cover these first four dots, we're going to end up someplace uh, west of the Cayman Islands. Okay, that's fine. Now, is that where you want to go? Now, there's just one little problem. Your GPS can't tell you that. It doesn't know the answer unless you tell it. Now, having said that, if you tell it what the answer is, it can suggest a course change. Okay? And this is the pattern that we use for personal agility. Okay? So the idea is, what you do, they're actually like leaving a trail of breadcrumbs. Okay, now someone was asking about what technology do I use. This is actually a screen dump from Trello, uh, which I made earlier today. And I've been keeping track of my breadcrumbs since December of 2016. Okay, and so you will see these things are color-coded. So like yellow is, uh, what's yellow? Yellow is the Scrum Breakfast Club. Green is doing something for my family. Orange is running my business. And this light blue is doing something for personal agility. Okay, and by looking at these, you can say, well, how much time have I been spending on personal agility? How much time have I been spending on the breakfast club? How much time have I been spending with my family? Uh, let's see, now it looks like I got two green ones for December. That's probably a good sign. Uh, I only got one in January, and when I'm honest, that one was really about me. That's probably a bad sign. So what does that tell me about what's important to me? Okay, so basically, um, where you're coming from what you do is a reflection of who you are. So let me give you a concrete example. If you go to church every week, people will call you a churchgoer. If you, um, if you donate money to charities, they'll probably call you a philanthropist. What do you do, what do they call you um, if you make promises that you can't keep or that you don't keep? What will, the, what will they call you if you deliver stuff that doesn't work? Well they're probably going to call you something like unreliable. Okay? And how are you going to feel about it? Well, s nervous, worried, scared. Okay? So basically, by doing better things for our, for our stakeholders, okay, by, get, by being good at getting things done, we make ourselves valuable to other people. And this is, this is where self-worth self comes from. So basically, when we look at where we've been, we can also make predictions about where we're going. Now, I actually look at this in two forces. So this is the breadcrumb. This is the breadcrumbs. This is the trail. This tells me where I've been. Those were those pale orange dots from the previous slide. And the next one is I can think about, well, where do I want to go? Okay? So I think of things that matter as being forces on your life. Okay? They push you to the left or they push you to the right. And the interesting question is, are you able to say, hey, I want to set a course. This boat is going to Jamaica not to Mexico. Uh, <clears throat> and the way you do that is you think about what's important and you think about how much, of it, how much attention each of the forces in your life should get. And it's entirely possible that you discover, hey, something is missing. 
I didn't spend enough time with my wife and kids last week. Okay, I want to do more. Maybe something is missing in your project. Okay, how do you, you know, how do you make that visible? Maybe a certain stakeholder is not getting enough priority, okay, or is getting too much priority, you know, given, given his importance. And this is how this concept of looking at what we're planning on doing and looking at what we did do, this is how we figure out what really matters. So I look at it this way. Um, who you are is a reflection of, of what you do, okay? And right now, today, you're somebody. Now, there are many things that you could do, and there are many somebodies that you could become. And the question is, which one do you want? And for me, what really matters is like a signpost pointing you to where you want to be, pointing you, helping you become the person that you want to become. Okay, now I realize I left out a question slide here. Piali, do we have any questions about this before I move on? Yeah, Anurag was uh, asking, now that we have started transformation and overlooked challenging hierarchy, how do we get back and uh, get collaboration from all the stakeholders? Okay, I'm going to talk about that in the next section, so let's, let's move forward with that. Um, so let's, let's, let's come back to those scrum roles for a minute. Okay, so in Scrum we've got three roles. We have the product owner, who's fundamentally responsible for why. Okay, the product owner, I always draw the product owner with the tie. Um, then we have the team, so the team has got all the skills necessary to get the job done. And then we have the Scrum Master. And the Scrum Master is basically a coach whose job it is to ask questions to help the other two roles do their work better. Now, when I think of, if, if I say I'm doing something for myself, there's really only one person here. But I can kind of pretend I'm three people, so there's me, myself, and I. These, these three roles, I can think about these three functions. Okay, so let's, let's talk about who sets priorities. Well, that's me. We all know it's all about me. Okay, now myself, I do all the work myself. And one of the problems that I have is that me is often not very nice to myself. Me always wants more, 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 more. And myself says, I'm working as hard as I possibly can. You know, please give me some space. Um, you know, so I is kind of this coaching role. Now, in Scrum, they say uh, the Scrum Master and the Product Owner cannot be the same person. And so now we're talking about, wait a minute, but we're saying we're going to divide all three roles among one person. Well, one of the things that we can do is we can say, what happens if we, if we take one of those roles and move it to someone else? So let's say I'm, I'm myself. I'm always, the, the perspective from personal agility is always myself, and the person who's doing the work. And so let's say you've got a stakeholder. The stakeholder is going to set priorities. So what you can do is you can have an interview with the stakeholder and say, Ms. Stakeholder, what's really important? What really matters for this project? Um, we, we can actually go more, you know, when we start these conversations, there's nothing to prevent us from getting more into coaching questions like, what are, what are your main challenges or what are our main challenges for this project? What do you really want to accomplish? Um, what are the risks? What are you afraid of? What might happen that would cause us problems? Okay? Or what are you beating your head against the wall? And so basically what, what we're doing is saying we can reach out to them, we can ask them these questions, we can even do it on a regular basis and say, okay, okay, of all the things that we could do, what would bring you the most value if we got them done next week? Okay, and this is basically the Scrum approach. Except when we do it like this, you don't even have to tell the person that you're doing this agility thing. You're just asking them questions. How you write them down, how you keep track of them. Um, you know, I, I could see, for instance, doing a priorities map where each ma major stakeholder is one of the, sorry, not a priorities map, but the forces map, where each major stakeholder is one of the columns in the forces map. Okay, and they represent a certain interest and they would like to have certain things done. You have a conversation, conversation with that person about why it's important and why. That is the key question. This is how, you know, this is how we make decisions is on the basis of why. And so what you're trying to do is, first of all, figure out what really matters. Um, you know, and the answer to that, and you figure that out by talking to people about why. Now, if you have, if you're one person and you've got three different managers or three different stakeholders and they all want different things, well, that puts you in front of a, of a bit of a problem because how are you going to figure out what's really, you know, what's really important? And 
I don't have a general answer to that question, but I do have a way forward. And the way forward is to say, who can help me figure this problem out? Okay, and search out that person and try to say, how can we figure out a solution here? So basically, when we look at these three roles, uh, the easiest thing to do is if, if you have, if there's an authority relationship, then the person in authority is the product owner, and the person who's myself, who's doing the work, also takes on the Scrum Master role and says, I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure that we're in sync on priorities. Okay, and we you know, figure out what really matters from that person's perspective and have a conversation about what are the most important things to get done. And so what you're doing, is, oh, and by the way, you know, and then you update this on your priorities map or your forces map, you know, so that you've got a very, very good understanding of what that person wants. And that makes it easier for you to do the right thing in the, that person's eyes. Um, the other thing that you can do is because you know what your priorities are, because you know you, you have some visibility about what you, what you can get done, you also have a basis for setting expectations and saying, um, you know, I would really like to take this on, but uh, it doesn't look very likely this week because, you know, my backlog is, my backlog is full. However, I'm confident that we'll be able to take it on next week. And so you, you get the basis for setting more realistic, realistic expectations with your stakeholders. Okay, so what I'd like to do is check that I've answered that question about how we're going to handle the, um, um, you know, how to handle the relationship with stakeholders. Yeah, there is uh, another question by Manoj. Uh, how to map the forces map with priority map? Okay, so basically the forces map, each one of those columns in, in Scrum terminology, this would be a backlog. Okay, and so what you're going to do is you're, you're going to maintain you know, the list of things to do for each, you know, you know, for each major thing that matters, you'll maintain that in the forces. And then when you get into the uh, weekly planning or the weekly celebrate and, and choose, what you'll do is you'll pull from the forces map into the what could you do column. Okay, and then you'll sort by priority and um, uh, separate out into urgency. And from there, you'll pull into what you're actually going to do. Okay, and conversely, you know, as you get things done, you'll put things into the done column. And then at the end of the week, uh, what I usually do is have another column which has the name of the month. So right now we're in March, so I would put it in. And, you know, so I would just, as once a week, I would move things from done into done in the current month. And that's how I create my breadcrumb trail. Okay, so what I'd like to do is go on to the next page. Okay, and talk about how we get started with personal agility. So what I want to do is talk to you a bit, just a bit about the book. Uh, we're also creating a course, and then I'm going to walk you through creating your priorities map. Okay, now a little bit of warning about creating the priorities map. You know, you're going to need time to enter things, you know, to write stuff down, and you're also going to create stuff. And so this is the point where I kind of like you to put things into Twitter um, so that we can see what you're doing. Uh, and I'll be monitoring the Twitter feed on my iPad so I can, so I can uh, call out and celebrate things. Um, so let's talk about the book. So, you know, we figured that we're on to something. And <coughs> so I've, I've teamed up with Maria Mattarelli, and she and I are writing the book together. Uh, we've created a website called mypersonalagility.org, and we've decided that we're going to do the book in kind of a lean startup way. So we basically, or a scrum way or an iterative way, that is we're putting out the book one chapter at a time. We're collecting feedback from our readers because we want this to be, shall we say, grounded in reality. And this also gives you an opportunity to start, you know, to start thinking about it and start applying it for yourself. So the current situation is just yesterday, we put out the first, um, uh, we put out the first chapter. Uh, you can sign up to it. Uh, registration is free. The, you know, and once you're registered, then you can download the chapter. Uh, there's an online forum where you can discuss the chapter. And there's another online forum where you can discuss your experiences. And we'd really love to have you there. Um, the other thing is we're starting to think about, well, how can we help people um, how can we help companies improve their productivity? How can we help them take advantage of this stuff? Um, and so we're starting to define the first course. Okay, and 
what we believe is that we can help people, certainly individuals, uh, double their productivity in 60 days. We want this to focus on service companies, maybe consultancies together, um, depending on how similar they are, but definitely for service companies. So, you know, if you're looking for, you know, better at making commitments you can keep and better at setting priorities, this is what the course, this is what the, the uh, boot camp is about. It's probably going to be an eight-week event. Now, I was hoping that we would be ripe enough that I could actually take registrations at this point. Um, as it is, I can't um, because it, it's, it still needs a little bit of solution validation. I want to talk to people who are actually interested. So it is, however, quite concrete. Okay, so here is the situation. If, you're, if, if you think this might be interesting for you or your company, you need to send me an email. Uh, the first, it's going to be an online course, so much like we're doing it now. The first course is going to start on May 3rd. Uh, I'm going to make a limited number of free spaces available, and so that's going to be kind of a first come, first serve. Um, the other thing is we're going to offer some sponsoring slots. Now, these will cost money because the idea is you're, you're supporting our efforts very, very early, even though it's a bit in the early adopter phase, and we want to recognize that. Uh, and once again here, first come, first served. So if if you're interested in this course, please contact me. What I will do is over the course of the next two weeks, I will contact you and we'll do a little bit of problem validation to make sure that we have a course that meets your needs. So, do we have any questions at this point about the course or the book? Mm, not exactly about the course. Okay. Along with the recording, if you could also okay. share sample Trello boards for us to get started with personal agility, that would be great. I'll, to be quite honest with you, I don't know how to do that. Now, I'm going to walk you through how to do I think you're going to get that in the next section. Um, the How to set up the Trello board will be part of, part of the workshop. Um, so... Yes, I'm going to say that's, that's part of the workshop. Now, I'm going to give it to you how to set it up in cards. And basically, uh, you have to figure out how to use Trello and set it up just like it's on the cards. So I guess that's a, a partial, partial answer. Now, I'm, I'm looking at the questions myself. I, I see uh, Surajit had a question about how are the life stakeholders' mindset influenced along the way? How do we make them a partner in our personal agility journey? And I think the answer here is really quite simple. Just invite them to discussions. Say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about what really matters to make sure um, that you know, I've got my priorities in sync with your priorities. Just invite them to a question, uh, invite them to a conversation, ask them questions. You know, one of the things that, that happens um, is people go to customers with the solution that they want to sell, not with uh, the desire to find out about the problem that needs to be solved. So if you reach out to your customers or stakeholders or you know, even, even your, you know, your husband, wife, or spouse um, and say, hey, um, what did you get done yesterday? What would you like to do today and what's getting on your nerves? That's already, you know, just, just the dialogue is going to be, uh, is going to get things going in the right direction. And one of the things I believe is that you know, the kind of constructive conversations, these coaching questions, they build trust and they build openness uh, and they build respect. And I actually believe that this could be an important um, approach to bringing in this agile mindset uh, into parts of the company that otherwise aren't very interested or don't seem predestined to do agile. Okay, so at this point, um, I'd like to ask one more question. I'd like you guys to help me a little bit. Uh, this is a hypothetical question. Uh, this is the last poll. If you were going to participate in a weekly 90 minute online course, when would be a good time during the day for it to start? Okay, and there are five possibilities uh, before, well, Piali, why don't you start the, uh, start the poll? Yes. Uh, we'll take a minute for this and then we'll start looking at how to, how to start, how to get going with personal agility. Okay, so the possible answers here are before work starts, sometime in the morning, around lunchtime, um, afternoon at work, or after work, what would be your preference, or what would be most the easiest for you to do? And a very strong preference for not doing it during working hours, either before the course starts or after work. And I'm also hearing that the people would rather stay up late than get up early, so I can understand that. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's very helpful. So, 
Okay, so basically what we want to do um, is create our priorities map. <coughs> now, what I find to be um, uh, um, what I find to be useful is even before we ask ourselves the question, what matters? If we're trying to do, if we're setting out to do something, um, there's some improvement in ourselves or in our situation that we want to have. This is the deeper why for doing personal agility. Okay, so the first question, even before I ask the personal agility questions, is I say, well, what's the definition of awesome? Okay, and then we got to make, so we're going to need a board. Uh, we've got to have place for the de definition of awesome. We've got to have space for um, each of the questions. Okay, and so when the smoke clears, we're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, so this is the heart of the priorities map. Okay, so we've got a column for each of the major questions. What really matters? What could I do? What is urgent this week? Uh, what do I plan to accomplish this week? And what do I want to work on now? Okay, oh, and let's not forget a done column. Okay, so this is, this is what we're going to work towards. Okay, so what I would like to suggest that you do. Um, okay, before we do matters questions. What I would like you to do is take for a moment, think about, you know, if, if you start doing personal agility, what would you like to be able to say about yourself two months from now? Or say about your situation? Why will this be a success? So what I'd like you to do is take, let's do one minute intervals um, and then put in the chat window, not in the question window, just put in the chat window, or if you prefer, take a picture and put them on Twitter. Um, what you put down here. So let's take, I'm going to start the timer for a minute, okay, and this is a time to just write down what will make personal agility a success for you. Okay, now we're getting down to the end of our minute, and I realize the timings here are much too short for doing this in real life, you know, so please, please remember that this is just kind of a, you know, this is, this is how we get, real life you're going to take more time to think about these questions. Um, I found talking to people about their um, challenges, fears, and frustrations uh, is very helpful to kind of help them understand, well, what do, what do I need to change in my life? What do I need to make better? And, you know, so you, so you talk about that first. If I were doing this as a coaching, uh, you know, one of the questions that I would be asking is about challenges, fears, and frustrations. Then I would talk about what's going to make this a success. And so at this point, what I'd like you to do is, you know, ask you to write in into the chat or put it out on Twitter, uh, what are the things that you wrote down here? What are the things that, that, um, uh, that you would like to achieve by, by using personal agility? Yeah, now this is, this is one of the challenges of doing something in a workshop because if, if it's, it's very, or doing things, things workshop-like in a webinar because I'm really dependent that, that things come back when we ask questions. Or how about holding up your hand or, or saying ping if you're still here? Manoj has shared, one, getting organized, two, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, well, Puneet has shared, answer more efficient way of doing work. Hmm, okay, ah yes, we're starting to see some there, yes. Narsi has written, to be able to program in Java, to work on a specific domain and to figure out short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. Okay, good. So this is, you know, so this is the sort of thing, you know, one of the challenges with, with applying something like this, especially if you're doing it yourself, is how do I keep doing it? And one of the, one of the, one of the things that helps, it's not the only thing that helps, is having a goal, something that you want to achieve that you can say, I'm working towards this. Okay? So, as we work through this now, um, as I say, we're going to get a priorities map that looks something like this. Okay, so we've got, I usually use different color-coded cards, and I also do this in, um, uh, with the Trello board. So in this case, we've got yellow cards as kind of the column headers. The stuff that matters is in orange, and the individual tasks are, or, you know, things that I want to get done are in blue. Excuse me. Um, but you'll also notice that I've, that I've got these little yellow, or these little colored dots, okay? These are like the, the original voting dots. And this is actually something very easy to do in Trello because Trello supports labels. 
and the labels are just color codes that you can attach some text to. Um, and so basically, you'll see for my, uh, my top priority is to do something nice for my family, um, that is my wife and my kids, and maybe even myself, at least once a week. Um, and, and for me, it's, it's really important to have that. Well, this is, this is the what, what really matters column. Um, because if I didn't have that as a priority, I would probably forget to do it. Now, for me, the next most important thing is running my business, okay? You know, the, that ship is not allowed to sink. And then for me, number three uh, is uh, sharing personal agility with the world. And then I've got something else which, um, uh, you know, which I've also got on the board. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to do things that don't match up to one of your priorities. And that's kind of interesting, so you could put that with a white card. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is let's think about, you know, think about the bigger picture. What are the, one way to think about what really matters is that they're like reference points or navigation points. What are things that are really important to you? Um, another metaphor, well, we had the forces metaphor, like the winds and the currents affecting the ship. Um, another approach is to say, these are like major goals. I want to climb Mount Everest, or I want to learn to fly, or I want to finish my thesis, or I want to get a promotion. Okay, so these are, they, they could be very direct goals, or they could be very, um, they could be more orientation goals. Okay, so here again, I'd like you to take a minute, um, write down uh, what really matters. What are the things that you want to orient your decisions on? And by the way, also here, the good practices for cards, big letters, thick pens, and one item per card. Uh, this is very important because you know, here we're using the cards to organize information. And if you've got more than one item on a card, then it's very difficult to organize the information by moving the cards around. Okay, Sudhir okay. has shared, to get into my next level in my organization, Nita has shared my health, get over my fear of speaking to clients, spend more time with family. Yes, this is a, this is a very common theme, is, is having, having a balance between, uh, between personal aspirations and your job. Uh, we see a lot of that. Uh, better work-life balance, getting things done, not procrastinating. Well, I think this looks more, ah, avoiding failures. Okay, how do we avoid failures with this approach? Well, it's real simple, by getting very, very clear on what's important and what we have to do uh, to do this. Okay, I think I've gone a little bit, okay, so we've got grow my kids, produce more output. Now, produce more output, that's kind of an interesting, ah, I've got to produce more. That kind of reminds me of the treadmill. And I would, I, I would challenge you to, to reflect on that one. What if instead of saying produce more output, you put in have better outcomes? What's the difference between an output and an outcome? An output is what you produce, and an outcome is happy stakeholders. Okay, so let's move on. So as you, you know, so now you've got some orientation points. Now one of the things which often happens is you ask people what really matters, and they say, um, I don't know. And in fact, in my case, when I was first told about this concept of what really matters, um, the, 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 the woman who explained it to me, she talked about navigation stars. What are the stars that you navigate by? And for two months, I thought this is a really interesting concept. I, I created a column for it on my board, and I had no idea what to put in there, put in there, just none whatsoever. And so if you're finding that this question is difficult, it's perfectly okay to just leave it blank, okay? Because, see, this is the thing about what you're doing is going to tell you what you consider important, okay? So if you have to put out three fires and negotiate two things with, with a customer, well then some, there's going to be something about customer relationship and there's going to be something about firefighting which, you know, you start to recognize those patterns and then you can put them into the column, um, what really matters. Okay, so for the next step um, is to say, okay, what could you do? Okay, and the, the basic idea is when you realize that you want to do something, you want to do what they call closing the loop. You want to get it written down some place where you won't forget it. Okay, and in the simple form of personal agility, that's this column, what could you do, the possibilities column. Um, in the more advanced form, where you're using a forces map, you put it into the corresponding backlog on your forces map. Okay, so what I'd like to suggest that you do is you try to, you know, think of two or three items that you could put onto your, 
um, you know, in the what could you do column. Eh, three is a bit little, maybe four. Okay, so the first question is what could you do? And then once you've written them down, uh, sort them by importance. Okay, so let's take, let's take a minute and a half for that one because, well, the sorting is going to take a little bit more time. Okay, now the what could you do column, these things, just because you're writing them down doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get them done this week. Okay, because some things might be further in the future or they might be bigger goals that you can't really get done in the space of a week. Okay, and here, you know, like when we're working with, with stories in, in agile software development, we say, okay, if this story is too big to fit into a sprint, well, what are smaller pieces? Now, I work a lot with checklists, so I say, okay, I've got something to do and there are 11 things that have to be done in order for me to consider this bigger thing done. So what I'll do is I'll make a checklist, maybe on the back of the card, or, and this is where Trello is nice because Trello supports checklists that you can put in the card. Um, that, um, you know, that I can actually check off the individual items once a week. Now, it's possible, uh, you know, the idea is this is a repository for things you could do. Um, so you're actually going to be filling up this column during the week. And then when you get to your weekly um, uh, celebrate and choose, then what you're going to do is you're going to sort stuff, move, move important stuff to the top, move unimportant stuff to the bottom, and then <coughs> Some of the things that you could do are really urgent and really have to get done this week. Now, what I usually do is I have a red, I'll, I'll flag it in red or put a red dot on the card and then move that into the urgent column. Okay, and so that's, you know, so basically, you know, we've, we've created our list of possibilities, okay, and then we're going to do a bit of a triage of the things that you could do. You want the important things at the top of the, the really important things. Everything is important, but the really important stuff needs to come to the top. And some of that important stuff is also urgent. Okay? Now, it's entirely possible, if you've got enough capacity to do everything on your plate, that's great, that's wonderful. You know, put it into the, put it into the work in progress column and you're fine. Um, if you think there's more that you can, there's more on your, that you can do, okay, of all the things I've got to get done, what do I want to focus on this week? Okay, and obviously, you know, the urgent stuff is, is going to tend to dominate here, but remember, you know, the analogy of getting that boat into port. Make sure you've got some capacity to work on where the boat is going. Okay, and so the next thing that's going to happen is, you know, and this is the, this is the, the conclusion of the uh, uh, celebrate and choose. Of those things that are important um, and urgent, you're going to put them into your, your plan for the week. Okay, so if you've been doing Scrum, this what could you do, what's important, what's urgent, that is like backlog refinement. That's like getting ready for the sprint. What do, what do you want to accomplish, that's kind of like sprint planning. Okay, this is creating what, what scrum trainers call the forecast. This is what I think I can accomplish. The only difference is when you get to the end of the week, it's entirely possible that the week has changed so, so much that you won't have gotten those things done, you might have gotten something else done. Um, in scrum, that's a bit embarrassing. Uh, in personal agility, that's okay, because usually you're your own product owner, and so you get to make those prioritization decisions. Now, what I find it useful to do at the beginning of each day is to, first of all, say, what did I get done yesterday? So if I got a card that's done, I'll move it into the done column. The next question is, what do I really have to get done today? One item, okay? If I don't get anything else done, that's okay, but I want to get this one item done and I put that one into the, this, this is what I'm working on column. Um, and I found that this helps me focus a lot, especially when I'm procrastinating, because I say, okay, there's, there's only one thing on my radar screen right now, and that's this top priority thing. So, the basic rhythm is you celebrate, uh, you celebrate done, and you cho choose new goals every week. Um, you're going to update your priorities map daily. Uh, where life gets interesting is when you start to notice that, that something that used to matter less is starting to matter more you realize that a former top priority has now moved down. Um, this is an opportunity for reflection, and if you've got stakeholders involved, this is an opportunity to have a conversation with the stakeholders about, okay, what's, what's happening, why is it happening, and is this really what we want to have happening? Okay, and with that, this concludes the material that I, uh, that I would like to present. 
Uh, I believe we've got two minutes left for questions. Uh, one thing about questions is if you don't get, uh, if, if we don't get to handle the questions before the time out, if you go over to mypersonalagility.org, uh, sign up and go to the community forum on doing personal agility, I will answer any questions that show up there. So, Piali, do we have any more questions coming in? No, there are no more new questions. Uh, yes, okay. people have some uh, view about the online course. Multiple people has shared uh, the weekend should be the best thing for this class. Ah, thank you very much for pointing that out. Okay, uh, for the course, I'd like to encourage you to uh, to reach out to me by via email. Uh, Peter at uh, well, I'll do the easy one. That's Peter Stev. P-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-V, so my first name plus the first four letters of my last name, at gmail.com. And, uh, or you can reach out to me through the Personal Agility website. Okay, and with that, I would like to thank you very, very much. Um, I look forward to hearing how you apply this, and if, if any of you have actually created, uh, um, you know, created a priorities map, I'd love to see it tweeted, and, and I'll... Uh, I'll favor it and, and like it. So thank you very much. Piali? Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and insights about my personal agility. It was really interesting. And uh, friends, I know many of the questions uh, we were not able to address. You can tweet them with the hashtag personal agility and uh, hashtag discuss agile. Peter can address them. You can also sign up to the mypersonalagility.org form. Thank you all for joining. Thanks again. Thank you, Piali. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.